some samples of a couple of sheets just to give you the idea that we need to document everything that goes on when you're recording a project. We need to know who the producer is, what's the date, who's the artist, who's paying the bill, who's the client, who's the first engineer, who's the second engineer, who filled out this as the second engineer, who filled out this. I want to know in case I don't understand something, I want to know who to call and talk to. What's the format? Are we going into Pro Tools? Is this a D88? Is this an ADAT? Is this a 24 track, two inch tape? Sample rate. Are we doing something with sample rates? Is it 48, 44, 1? Here we have three different rooms. So are we doing this in room A, room B, or the post room? Any remarks, any other thing we want to say we can say about the session up here? Now under here, the title says, okay, Carmine's favorite song, take one. So, she goes out there and they play that song, take one, and it stops. Oh, okay, well, we're going to keep it on the tape. We're going to go to Carmine's favorite song, take two. Okay, so the next line we put Carmine's favorite song, take two. But after the first take, we have to put FS. That was a false start. It wasn't a complete take. There is no real way to tell what's on that tape. There's no way to tell without an index. This is the index for what's on the tape. And if you put tones on the head of this tape, you're going to put it on this tape sheet, tones at head. 1K, 100, and 12K tones. Now, if we were to say, oh, take two didn't work, let's go over take two. Take two never happened, because you erased it. I don't want to know what used to be on the tape. I only want to know what is on the tape. So if you've erased something, it never happened as far as this sheet goes. Is there a slate on this tape? Did someone in front of this tape say, this is this song, take one? Oh, they forgot to put the slate on, so they said, that was such and such a song, take one. Well, I want to know that, was that HS, head slate, or TS, tail slate, in the little, because you only have a little bit of room there, that's where we got all these abbreviations. Or is there no slate on this tune? NS. Uh, okay, take three of this song was a, a complete take. All right, put down there, C, complete take. Oh, they started the take four of this song. They went all the way halfway through and they stopped. Long false start, LFS. Let's say we got to take seven and it was the great take. We put down complete and we put down M, master, circle it. This is the master, we've decided it now that it was the master, because three weeks from now you're not going to remember which complete take was the master. PB, playback. You got a complete take on take four, and the producer says, gee, that was a good take. Let's do another take. When we go to mix, I'd like to hear take four, playback, before we mix, or before you're going to do any overdubs. You're going to do voiceover, you got to make the decision which one is the real master, but at least the producer says, I want to hear that again and make a decision another day. So you put playback, because you might do 10 sessions before you see this person again. You're not going to know or remember anything. Well, now let's say is we got the master, and just as soon as the string players finish the thing, they go, da, and they put their bow down on the stand, instead of, and the conductor will go until you give them the, okay, and then they, you release everybody. Because you don't want anybody making noise on that ring out. All right, well, well what am I going to do now that I got this? Well, I'm going to look on my take sheet and say, are there any complete takes? Have I got the last note someplace else? Yeah, down here. Let me go listen and see if someone screwed up on that one too. Oh, no, that one's clean. I got the full ring out of that last chord. Great, cut the last chord out, bring it over, put it on this take, boom. And I can look on here without having to go back and listen to everything to find out if I got the last chord. If you've ever been in a studio with reel-to-reel, -reel, this engineer puts a tape on, and you say, okay, we're going to go to uh, the third tune down there, take four. All right. He goes, stops the machine, hits plate, there you are. Take four, the third song. Did you ever wonder how he got to that point in the middle of the tape where it, there's no marks, no nothing? They do it because of this sheet. And because of your long false start, your false start, your complete take information. They put the tape on and it's put on tails out. When they start to rewind to play it, the first piece of music that they hear is going to be at the bottom of this sheet. 
So then they look at it and they say, is this a, oh, it's a complete tape. So they want to hear, going by the heads. You can hear the sound going by the heads and rewind. Now they'll hear a complete take go by. Then the next one is a false start. Then a long false start. Another complete take. Another complete take. And another false start. There it is. Song number three, take four. Boom. And that's how they do it. By hearing what goes by on the heads and by reading your accurate documentation.